Shalom, shalom, everyone. I hope you are having a very beautiful day. I am sitting at the park, you know, meditating, thinking, and about to go do some food deliveries. And I just wanted to stop by and talk about racism within charity giving. Um, I had a couple of qu questions um, stating, do we only give to African Americans? You know, this service is a great service and everybody needs food. And I don't believe I've ever stated that we only target African American community. But let's get real. Our community, the African American people of color community, um, is at the lowest on the economic scales. And statistics show that. And I've done plenty of research. I have given to all people, but from my personal experience, African Americans, you know, people that look like me, that live in my community, they deal with me uh, better than, um, I'm just going to get real, than my uh, white community members. Um, I have delivered to white community members and when they see that it's me or they see that it's my husband it's a shock because it's one thing to be a volunteer and you know and to go deliver the food it's a totally different thing when they see that you the person that is calling them back you are the person that is bringing them the food and they go to your website and it's you know it's mostly black people and that's that's a no-no for some people and I have went to some people homes who I knew needed the food um, I've been turned away by um, people that live in the trailer park communities I mean I've outright been told we don't need your services we don't need your help you know and once people call us and they find out that we're black, we never hear from them again. That's a true story. We never hear from them again. Another story, I went here in North Carolina. We're located in Fayetteville. And I went to a senior building. It was predominantly white, okay? And it had, you know, it had some black uh, seniors, but it was predominantly white. So I talked with the... um with the uh, person in charge of activities and I let them know what I wanted to do and they were all happy and thrilled so we were going in there and uh, the day of the meeting you know people, the seniors came out and they were white and they came out and I'm you know telling them about what we do and what we would like to give and one by one they got up and walked out on my presentation and the only person that was left is the black worker that worked there. And she was thrilled at the work that we were doing in the community. I mean, if she got a notepad and pencil and started taking down information immediately. So racism is real. I don't know about a lot of black-owned charities that give food and clothing. I am not saying that there is none. I'm saying I don't know um, a lot of them. And I'm not I'm not talking about churches. I'm not talking about churches. I'm talking about black owned charities, black owned organizations that target um, black communities, underserved communities, disadvantaged communities, all these words that they give us. <laughs> um, and I don't know a lot of them. And I've been looking and as of today, I am the only black-owned food pantry that's mobile that bring groceries to the seniors. We know there's Meals on Wheels. We know that. But I am the only black mobile food pantry. And the Most High gave me that. And he told me not to become a 501c3. And I did not understand that because at that time, I was sitting in the church. And I'm like... <laughs> That's what everybody want, you know, that's what everybody wants um, to be 501c3. And he took me on a journey and he told me and he showed me why I cannot be 
And today, here I am sitting talking about racism within charity giving. And I'm glad I'm not 501c3 because they cannot shut my mouth or tell me what I can and cannot say. I'll pay my taxes, but right now we're not big enough, you know, to pay taxes. But when that time comes, I'll pay my taxes and I'll be able to say what it is that I need to say. So, you know, we don't target just African Americans, but that is who responds. I've not had um, a white person to ever donate. I'm going to say that again. I have not had to date a white person who donated to us. I'm not saying that that will never happen. I'm just telling you, as of today, we've been in um, doing this since 2009. We did this in Indiana, in Gary, Indiana, and we brought it to North Carolina. Okay, and wherever we move to, wherever we go, we will continue to do this. And I probably will continue to get the same thing because in Indiana, I dealt with the African American community. I did, I did, um, as I stated earlier, I did give to some white community members, but once they saw who we were, they didn't call us back. But our African American community members call us. And we don't ask for your income. We don't ask for your demographics. Who living with you? Do you get assistance from somewhere else? You could get assistance from everywhere. That's not my concern. If you call me and you are a senior within the age category, disabled or widow within the age category, we give you food. So it's not like I'm coming into you your space or I'm asking you for very personal information maybe making you feel a certain way you know and you may not call back that's not how we get that's not how we get down we just keeping it real today that's not how we get down here at Hebraic Awakening so I just wanted to set the record straight no we don't only target African American communities but that is who supports us. That is who needs us. And that is who responds when we reach out. So I hope that that changes. I hope that our white um, community members will, you know, lay the racism down. You hungry. I've, I've, <laughs> I've been to people's homes and they're hungry. But that racism will keep them from getting a food bag from someone who is black it's just it is what it is now I'm not saying that that is everybody's experience but I'm telling you mine that's why I'm not I'm not telling you about this 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 and who I'm telling you about my experience and I've been doing this since 2009 okay and it's almost 2020 and it has not changed and I, I guarantee you if I move to another state it probably will be the same so I'm hoping that this video will spark conversations within the white community's um, homes. And I pray that, you know, when you see uh, African-American charity reaching out and you see black people coming and doing and helping, that you don't let your bias, your prejudices, your racism, you know, interfere with what is good, what is wholesome, what is righteous. And I guarantee you, a lot of the white community members that don't want to have anything to do with us, I guarantee you they're Christians. So, continue to have a beautiful day. I'm going to continue to have a beautiful day. I'm going to continue to serve the community and anybody that calls. It doesn't matter your race, your background, as long as you, you know, you are within the senior community, even if you're disabled and I find out and um because i've served the disabled i've served uh you know i've served white community members who were disabled they didn't call me back they did not so i'm hoping that this sparks great conversation and you continue to have a beautiful day shalom everyone